So we all know the story of Adam and Eve. They were the very first people in the Bible and they lived in the last millennium of the prehistoric age. But did you know that Adam died at the age of 930? 900 freaking 30! How is that possible? Let's find out. Hi, my name is John Ardenforce and welcome to Bible Study. So, the first book in the Bible is called Genesis. And when people decide to give the Bible a chance and read it, usually the first question they get is... I wonder if they had belly buttons. No, 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 not that question. The question people usually ask is... How could people possibly live up to 900 years? This is ridiculous! This is entire Christianity is ridiculous! Fuck for this But it's true. In the early chapters of Genesis, people could live up to 900 years. In Genesis chapter 5 verse 1 to 32, we can more clearly see everyone's final age. Adam lived a total of 930 years, Seth lived a total of 912 years, Enosh lived a total of 905 years, Kenan lived a total of 910 years, and Mahalala lived a total of 895 years. I'm surprised nobody ever reached a thousand. Anyway, if the Bible is true, which I believe, how was this accomplished? How could people live such long lives? Well, there is a long answer and then there is a short answer. Let's start with the short answer. The genealogy in which people could live up to 900 years is in chapter 5. But in the next chapter, chapter 6, we get these verses. Genesis chapter 6 verse 1 to 3. When human beings began to increase in number on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be a hundred and twenty years. Here God decides to decrease the lifespans of man, and says that we will eventually only live up to a hundred and twenty years. Why did God do this to us? Well, that is explained two verses later. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he has made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. We can learn by these verses that God was the cause of our decreased lifespans, and he did it because of the wickedness of the human race. But how did God do it? Well that, my good friend, is the long answer. And the long answer is a good one. In chapter 1 of Genesis, we read this story of creation. And in Genesis chapter 1 verse 6, God said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. The vault is the atmosphere. And this verse indicates that there was indeed water above the atmosphere. A water canopy that surrounded the entire earth. It is speculated that if such a canopy would exist, it would create a greenhouse effect and block much of the radiation that now hits the surface of the earth, thus resulting in ideal living conditions for us humans on earth. Okay, but where is this water canopy then? Well, it disappeared before the Great Flood. Genesis chapter 7 verse 11 In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened. This verse indicates that the water canopy broke, either collapsing upon earth or dissipating into space, thus ending the ideal living condition. If you look at the genealogies before the Great Flood and compare them to the genealogies after the Great Flood, you'll notice that the human lifespans decreases dramatically, generation after generation. Even Jacob noticed this dramatic change in lifespans. Then Joseph brought his father Jacob in and presented him before Pharaoh, 
After Jacob blessed Pharaoh, Pharaoh asked him, How old are you? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The years of my pilgrimage are a hundred and thirty. My years have been few and difficult, and they do not equal the years of the pilgrimage of my fathers. This is called the canopy theory. It's a very interesting theory, even though it has its pros and cons. This video was brought to you by GodQuestions.org. Okay, I'm not really sponsored by them, but they're still awesome. GodQuestions.org has answered 449,893 questions about the Bible. So if you can't wait for my next video, I suggest you visit their website. And that was it. If you have any questions about this theory or about the Bible at all, feel very free to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and God bless you. Peace!